Let's get educated. That's why we're here, to bring you the stories impacting K-12 classrooms and college campuses. It's time for a little education. Well, hello everyone. I am Katie Patrick, joined by David Fiorazzo. And now, many of you know, you've heard it from us. Or maybe you haven't heard it from us because you're just tuning in. Welcome. We just want to let you know, we have our K-12 Classical Online School, Freedom Project Academy, and it is now accepting students for the fall. So, today's the day. Go out, request your free information packet at freedomforschool.com. All you have to go, freedom, F-O-R, school.com. And when you go there and you request your packet, you say, hey, who sent you here? How'd you find out? Well, you learned it from good old Katie and David, also One word. known collectively as Educated. educated okay one word educated just put that in just put that in tell them we sent you all right well uh, uh someone who's not that educated president joseph biden continues to say the uh shh, quiet part out loud because he just announced that there's no such thing as someone else's child and he added that teachers are determining the future of our country you know because <laughs> that's where we're at right now david <sighs> So the government, the president. Uh, yeah, the president <laughs> thinks the government apparently owns America's children. Uh, yeah. No such thing as someone else's child. So they're all your children or are they the government's children? Because I know it takes a village to raise. I'm kidding. I'm <laughs> Thank kidding. You, Hillary. Yeah, I know. So while honoring the 2023 National Teacher of the Year at the White House last week, President Joe Biden said that the nation's children belong to everyone. Everyone. Well, I guess that would be you and I too, Katie. Ooh, that's, that uh, counts. So you might not believe that he said that. Let's watch this video. There's no such thing as someone else's child. No such thing as someone else's child. Our nation's children are all our children. As I often say, you teachers hold the kite strings to lift our national ambitions aloft. You really do. Imagine, imagine, just imagine if we didn't have great teachers in this country. What? What difficult we are. You are determining our future. Yeah, your teachers uh, helped elect, elected me too, and there's no such thing as someone else's sure, child. Sure. Um, the, you know, I mean, there's a there's a scratch my back, I'll scratch yours with the Democrats that run the teachers' unions and the Democrats in the White House and the administration. It's it, always like that. It's always been like that since probably, gosh, before. Jimmy Carter. Oh, yes. Yeah. Except it's not scratching. It's more the massaging. Yeah. 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 And, okay. and worse. But during his speech, the president denounced elected officials who are trying to ban books and called for public schools to be a safe place for LGBTQ mm. students yes. and teachers. A yes. safe place. Always about that safe place. Yeah, they, they must be safe. Not for, it doesn't matter the other kids, but for the LGBTQ just make it safe, whatever you need to do. So during the 2022 National Teacher of the Year ceremony, Biden also said that once children step into the classroom, they belong to the teacher. No, seriously, he said that. He said that. They're all our children. So disturbing philosophy, if, yeah. if you believe in raising your own child according to the Judeo-Christian biblical you know, values that you want your child to learn and grow up and um go ahead katie yeah so that's the thing so in 2023 he says that there's no such thing as someone else's child a whole year ago he said <laughs> that they're all our children joseph robinette biden has been creepy since the day he was born apparently he thinks that government is the only solution to all things he thinks that anyone who believes in his same narrative are the ones who make need to make all the decisions and so he continues to go along with this shtick of his that is straight out of the communist manifesto karl marx it's it, take the it's, children yeah. away from the parents we the government raise mm -hmm. them the way we see fit and you have utopia yeah has that has it how has that worked out so far has that has that worked out for you any anywhere in Who's implemented well, that mental health? Well, we can How does see, it work out for you? Yeah, we can see the fruit. So. And you mentioned Karl Marx. I mean, Hitler said it. I mean, th um, probably all the dictators said it. Lenin, all Lenin of Stalin. Them said this. They understood the importance of getting the youth, accessing children, and really grooming, discipling them. They understood that. But uh, this, is, this is nothing new, but it's a really dangerous philosophy. 
And they talk about it openly and freely now, which is what I, because Biden doesn't know what he's saying. He's either doing what people tell them or reading the teleprompter. So he's just doing what they're telling him to say. And this is their philosophy that you don't own your child. And and, and yes, this is nothing new. And you mentioned Hillary Clinton at the beginning about it. No, you mentioned Hillary Clinton. Did I? Oh, you said the quote. (laughs) It takes a village, Hillary Clinton style. Um, Let's just, let's just go back like, mm, like a, a decade ago who was in office about a decade ago okay let's just take a look was it was anything happening about a decade ago we have never invested as much in public education as we should have because we've always had kind of a private notion of children your kid is yours and totally your responsibility we haven't had a very collective notion of these are our children so part of it is we have to break through our kind of private idea that kids belong to their parents or kids belong to their families and recognize that kids belong to whole communities once it's everybody's responsibility and not just the households then we start making better investments lean forward and get that fist up right the the clenched communist fist I, I just you know I didn't remember that clip I I almost cannot believe that was 10 years ago mm-hmm. that she said that About a decade yeah, 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 yeah. wow so you heard it yourself right here so you know that we're not making this up we're just drawing attention to it how and, dare you look yeah. at it how dare you draw attention wow we're just over here minding our business and then you're drawing the attention how dare you notice mm. You're not allowed to notice these things. Nope. So, yeah, <laughs> these are things that, like, like you said, you know, communist countries do. And it starts with propaganda, uh, legislation, you know, changing people's opinion. How, just think of where we were 20 years ago. I won't even say what would my great-grandparents say or think. Although think you, of, did, you just did. Yeah, I just did. Think of where we were 10 or 20, let's just say 25 years ago. Because even Katie can remember that. She's 25 years ago. (laughs) That's when you were very young. Um, Were you a toddler at 25 years? Anyway, think of where you were and think the the kind of national discourse you hear in the media, the narrative, the narrative that we we hear debated now. um, it, It wasn't quite here where we are today, where the government owns your children. And she really said something that's offensive. If you as a private United States citizen want to raise your own children the way that you deem right, the way that you want to raise them. In that clip, she just said, no, we got to get rid of this idea of the, the private idea of uh, having children and they're, they're yours. Come on. Yeah, I mean. Really disturbing. I mean, we might as well have them in beakers and just, you know, only produce the ones we want. And then that's it. And then. Did you say beakers? Beakers. Like a, like a little science little beaker. Oh, I test two babies. Yeah. A little beaker. <laughs> All right. That's what that's what they want. But anyway. All right. Still to come. A whistleblower sounds the alarm on just how bad the indoctrination of promoting communism, gender ideology, and Black Lives Matter, which I think they all kind of go together, has become in New York schools. We're going there next. Today's episode is brought to you by Freedom Project Academy. Looking for a K-12 classical online school built on Judeo-Christian values? FPA is enrolling now for the fall. Request your free information packet at freedomforschool.com. That's freedom, F-O-R, school.com. It's just another day in not paradise. But it is just another, another day in the uh, K-12 New York City school system where there's communism, there's gender ideology, there's Black Lives Matter, no and one you, else's life and matters. And, you know, we're not, we're not exaggerating. What she oh, just no, no. said, we are not exaggerating about these day. three things. It's just hard to hear. Yeah. So we have a story from Libs of TikTok who got an exclusive interview with a Brooklyn school teacher who decided to expose what happens behind the closed doors we call that a whistleblower (laughs) there we go whistleblower Whistleblower. now obviously this teacher wanting to keep a job chose to remain anonymous but she said she felt compelled to reach out to libs of tiktok after what she experienced teaching at sunset park high school and charles o dewey middle school so we're talking about a high school and a middle school, and it's Brooklyn. Uh, she said that parents are too busy to know what's going on. Well, it does take a village. <laughs> and the children belong to the gov- government anyway. So at Sunset Park High School, uh, they previously had received some backlash for displaying an image of a cop aiming a gun 
at a black girl in the school lobby. Mm, and although it was reported that the image was moved, the teacher, our whistleblower friend, confirmed that she had seen it displayed even after the incident. Now, these are all going to be examples of things that she's seen. So get ready. Wait a minute. Could this just be hearsay? Do you have any photo or video oh. evidence of any of this? Why, yes, David, I do. In one history class, the teacher said she was forced to proctor a test about the Black Lives Matter movement. The test included questions about George Floyd. It asked students to identify the principles of Black Lives Matter okay. and had them weigh in on whether the violent riots were justified. Wait a minute, there weren't violent riots. Those were peaceful protests. That's weren't right. They, so maybe it was a trick question. Yep. Now, when Libs of TikTok asked the teacher if she ever attempted to speak out against the curriculum, she admitted she was too afraid to do so. I wonder why. Um, but she continued to secretly document her findings. In one instance, she came across a book on a teacher's desk titled Communism for Kids. No way. Hey, why not? The book That's... promotes the principles of, you guessed it, communism in the form of a kid's story because they're children and we just want to present it in such a nice way for them to understand. <sighs> It is complete with illustrations of princesses and fancy swords and a talking <laughs> chair. Well, that's going to get the kids all excited about it, right? And in its introduction, the book reads basically like the Communist Manif Manif Manifesto, Communist Manifesto, Karl Marx. Again, we have a theme going on in this show. Yes, we do. Um, it says, communism names the society that gets rid of all the evil people, the evils that people suffer today in our society under capitalism. And to really understand communism and figure out which idea uh, or which idea of it is the best, we have to first understand capitalism and how it, it makes people suffer. That capitalism, it makes people suffer. Capitalism makes people suffer. Yes, yes. Apparently, All right. Apparently, it, it, it definitely Let me understand does. that when you compare it to what Lenin did and what Vladimir... Yeah, well, Vladimir Lenin yeah. and what Hitler did. So communism makes people... And look at Venezuela and all these others. Interesting. I just want to understand that it's capitalism is the, is the problem. Yes. Communism is the solution. Okay, I just want to understand where they're coming from at the public school We level. just need this great leap forward. That's all. Pardon? We just need a great leap forward. Lean, was it lean forward or leap forward? Leap forward. Right. Because mm. forward is the mm -hmm. one of the yes. communists, whatever, logos or whatever. Yeah. Now, the classrooms in Sunset Park High School are typically decorated with leftist propaganda by activist teacher, according to our teacher, there the whistleblower. Are. Now, Look. one teacher adorned the classroom with a poster that read, Sanctuary Cities Now. There were also posters that promoted Black Lives Matter and encouraged students to protest, organize, occupy, walk out, resist, strike, shut it down. Mm. Shut it down. Mm. Yeah. Shut what they it do. down. Shut yep. it down. Not cut it out. Uh, more images that were received revealed a Time Magazine cover. Oh, mm, just warm and fuzzy Was that there. a real cover? Maybe. I don't even know. But, I mean, it is a phenom. The one, the only representative, Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez. Oh, Lord yep, help yep. us. And as you saw there, it was next to an image of a women's march. Protesters, you know, holding the signs and, you know, watch out, Trump, my generation wait, comes next. Wait, wait, wait. It's not, <laughs> not entirely accurate. It was the progressive, radical, liberal, Marxist women's march. It wasn't just no, a no. women's march because then Christians, conservatives, Republicans, independents, and pro-lifers could also march, but they weren't allowed. Yes, yes. True story. We don't care about your facts over here, mister. <laughs> it's all about our feelings here. Now, uh... In another classroom, there were COVID-19 paintings adorning the walls with messages like, you know, get vaccinated and of be course. immune. And of course, you have to have the earth wearing a mask. What? And like all the people with all the different, you know, colored hands, race, different races, holding the earth up and protecting the earth. I'm and, trying to understand what, yeah. what the, the, the earth wearing a mask. It's about protection, keeping us safe. Okay supposedly All right. now once uh, outside the classroom and into the hallways there is still no escaping the leftist messaging because lining the corridors are transgender flags and pride decorations even in the hallways oh yeah of course uh. the teacher said that there's a large amount of transgender male teachers in particular this got confusing especially when one showed up visibly pregnant wait a minute so transgender male would that Oh, are you woman saying, to male. Oh, so you're so it's a woman. Woman, right? yeah, it's a woman. So and one of them showed up visibly pregnant. That's not confusing at all to the children. But there's no grace given to those who mistakenly misgender. 
the those who believe they're transgender because the teacher said that I got yelled at in front of the whole class because the whistleblower whistleblower mistakenly said like misgendered whoever the person was. Oh, misgendering. So, how dare you? How dare you? Now at the middle school, same same things craziness is happening. Uh, the same radical ideas were happening at the Charles O. Dewey Middle School. Now, the teacher provided a picture of one classroom that had a large transgender pride flag prominently displayed. You see it there on Look the at left that side. Big old flag. It's there. And there are two American flags that kind of are like off to the side, crumpled up, trying to be hidden. It looks no like one the, cares. It looks like that one on the left is like on top of a bookshelf or something. It's like, yep. I'll just, just we'll, we'll just put it, it up there. there. We've got more important things to display in the classroom. Yeah, basically. So basically this, this teacher said she can't remain silent any longer. She's been doing this for years, um, trying to teach. And it's just compounded, compounded, compounded. Um, she does have a sense of guilt for not speaking out until now. And she is glad that she can at least play a part in exposing the school and help implement some sort of change for future children. Mom and dad, you can implement the most change. Get your kids out. That's it. All right. Well, coming yes. <laughs> up, a school district in Washington has canceled all music lessons for the fourth graders because the school board director claims that it allows white supremacy culture to continue to be propagated and cause significant institutional violence. That music. Where is a rim shot when you need one? Stay with us. Today's show is sponsored by our friends at MyPillow. Save up to 66% on pristine quality bedding, towels, slippers, signature pillows, and much more when you use the code EDUCATED. That's E-D-U-C-A-T-E-D, -E EDUCATED. Support this show and a great American company. Everything's racist. And everything is sexist. Everything? And everything is white supremacy. Everything? Yes, it is. At least it is if you live in Washington where they, uh, they think that if you teach children about music and to have a love of music, that is somehow white supremacy. Musical instruments are white supremacy. It just keeps getting dumber. That's all I can say. Uh, a large school district. So these in, people have no concept of world history. If they have no any, concept of ahead. anything. But go ahead. large school district in Washington has canceled music lessons for the fourth graders oh, because that school board director says that teaching children musical instruments somehow racist. Yep. Scott Clifthorn is the board director at Olympia School District, and basically he. You could defend him in the fan, in the sense, not about the racism part, but hey, our money, our, our school district needs to save money. You're going to cut the music program. I get that argument. I don't get the argument of we need to cut the music program because it's teaching white supremacy. <laughs> I don't, I can't get that link there. But by eliminating band and orchestra for fourth and fifth grade, the Olympia school district could would save five hundred and thirty thousand dollars. Which, how much money are you spending on these things? Now, the district did agree to keep the fifth grade program, but you fourth graders, sorry, you're going to have to wait until fifth grade. We're a school district that lives in, in as an entrenched and is surrounded by white supremacy culture, not just schools, but local government, state government, our churches, our neighborhoods uh, inculcate and allow white supremacy culture to continue to be propagated and cause significant institutional violence. Um, are things that we have to think about carefully as a community. Okay, if you didn't understand that, it was hard to hear. That we do have that, that quote, and he really did say, he went there, Katie, mm -hmm. uh, which all of our institutions, not just schools, local government, state government, churches, mm -hmm. or neighborhoods, inculcate and allow white supremacy culture to continue to be propagated and cause significant <laughs> institutional violence are things that we have to think about carefully as a community. <laughs> That's a nice tie in there. Now, David, you were a drummer in a rock and roll band. Yes, true so, story. So how do, how do you feel about this? I mean, I know, I, I do believe you identify as a white person. No, I don't. No? So... This is white. There you go. This is white. I am not white. 
I do not <laughs> identify. That's but not that's play. not quite that kind of melanin. <laughs> but you were able to play in the band, so whatever. <laughs> you're still white supremacist, according to this guy. I get you every time with that. Every single time you do that. All right, now uh, for you out there who are <laughs> using your brains, you're probably thinking of the same thing that one parent thought of. Uh, Alicia Perkins had a response all about this. She said. This type of language from this particular board director and the entire board is not surprising at all. This is actually par for the course. The issue is we are having such a catastrophic budget crisis right now that they, they are having to cut programs. And so what has happened in this program has been deemed inequitable. And in a previous comment, the director of elementary education stated that not only is this program inequitable, but when she heard the word tradition of excellence Ooh, what a phrase which was used to describe our music programs she said the word tradition actually translated to her to mean systemic discrimination yeah yes we can't have traditions traditional excellence tradition? what tradition no traditions. of excellence yep not allowed so if our kids are doing well in band music instruments must cut it because we can't have anything good anymore clearly 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 just clearly. They're losing students in huge numbers. Yeah, of course. But hey, this is where we're at. Anyway, still to come. We actually have a happy story. Thank you. Yay. Happy story. Quack. Um, as an Ohio school captures video of <clears throat> quack, a mama duck and her babies strolling the halls. Quack, quack. Something she has apparently done for years. Quack. And we're going to waddle into this one next. If you have a smartphone, tablet, Roku, or Apple TV, consider downloading the Freedom Project media app. It's 100% free and includes all of our weekly shows, plus lecture series, archive programs, and award-winning animated videos for families like the Presidential Minute, Battles of America, and Heroes of the West. Don't rely on the social media giants to keep you informed. Simply download the Freedom Project media app from your app store and allow notifications. And we'll let you know when a new video is ready. Moving on to Springboro, Ohio. A hen and her ducklings, this just in, were spotted taking a tour of an elementary school in Ohio this week, according to the Springboro School District. The mother duck has made Clear Creek Elementary's sensory garden her home for five years. Five years this has been happening. Using the outdoor sensory garden space to build nests and lay her eggs. Will you keep it down, Mama? This mom trusts our space to safely build a nest and lay her eggs. Occupational therapist Sarah Wilgus said in a Facebook post on the school district's page, the sensory garden is free of predators, and I think she enjoys the soothing sounds of the wind chimes to help keep her babies calm at night. Staff at Clear Creek provide the Duck family with a less confined space behind the school in a wooded space and so that Mother Duck and her 12 ducklings were walked out of the school building there and um, they're going to be relocated. It's an interesting story. Five years, Katie. That's awesome. Five years. All I have to say You heard is, the happy mama leading her duckies? 12 little ducks went out one day over the hill and far away. Mama Duck said quack 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 and all of the 12 little ducks came back if you know that nursery rhyme but it's actually five little ducks and you know you work your way down then not all the ducks come back but don't worry in the end the ducks come back well then you've had toddlers in your life and um that's where i'm at in life i so like that one that's all i could think about the entire time i saw the little mama <laughs> mama duck and all the little duck ducklings going going along with her hopefully they all come back if she can't find them she knows they're in the school which is pretty interesting. I just, it is. I just hope there haven't been any incidents with the children and the ducks or, you know, little ducklings. They're, they're, they're a little crazy. Cute. They're yeah. super cute. But they're little crazy things. And you know, they're kind of like toddlers and young elementary students. They just go wherever. All Ducky right. story to end with today. Quack, quack. All right. Well, make sure you hit that like button if you're watching us right now on social media. And if you want to send us your feedback or your nursery rhymes, you can do that too. Now, for David and myself, thank you for watching. Thank you for listening. And thank you for supporting this show. Quack, quack. Until next time, stay educated.